What's up YouTube? So this is a video that I've been wanting to make for quite a long time. I just get a lot of questions about this online, so I wanted people to have a place to go to learn when they have questions about protein powder. So let's just dive right in. So what exactly is protein powder? Well, I'm sure you've all seen these big massive tubs that have just been laying around YouTubers' houses or you see them in the backgrounds of bodybuilding pictures or videos or anything like that. So what exactly is in these big tubs if you've never used protein powder before? Protein powder, in short, is just a protein derivative from a source. So that source could be dairy, that source could be cheese, that source could be a plant, that source could be a pea or egg. There's a ton of different types of protein powders out there, but it's basically just a concentrated, a concentrated protein derived from a source in the form of powder. You'll add flavors, there's a lot of different things that go into it outside of just the protein itself, but that, in short, is what protein powder is. So there's a lot of different types of protein powders out there. I, this isn't a video saying, oh, our protein is the best because we do have a protein powder on the market under our own brand. This is not going to be that type of video. So there are a lot of different protein types. There's, like I said earlier, there's whey, which comes from dairy. There's casein, which comes from cheese. There's hemp, there's pamp plant-based, there's egg, there's pea protein, there's beef protein. There's a lot of different protein powders out there. So if you're on a special diet or if you have certain dietary regulations, you can always find a protein powder that fits you. For me personally, when I was a vegetarian, I was using a plant-based protein powder. Um, they don't necessarily taste as good as the whey or the egg or the casein ones, but you can find adequate plant-based protein if that is your dietary style. Um, for me, the egg protein really made me break out quite a bit, and I'm just sharing experience with you guys. You might have totally different experiences than me. Um, when I tried egg, egg protein, it really did make my skin not so happy, um, so I did stop using the egg-based plant protein, or the egg-based protein. So yeah, so there's all different types. So the taste is going to depend on the company. And a good rule of thumb, if you are looking to pick out a protein powder, is you want to make sure there's less than two grams of sugar per 20 grams of protein. So if there's, if it's a 40, you know, 40 gram scoop, you wanna make sure there's less than four grams of sugar in that, in that protein. And then there's also meal replacement shakes, which aren't necessarily protein powder. So meal replacement shakes have more things in them than just protein. So the fat content will be a lot higher and the carb content will be a lot higher as well. So when you're looking for a protein powder, you wanna make sure it's high in protein, low in sugar, low in fat, and low in carbs. That being said, there are a ton of protein powders on the market. There's a ton. There's probably at least 500 different brands, flavors, types, at least 500, at least. You walk into any store, any supplement store, and you can see that for yourself, or look online, look on Amazon. Price really does affect the protein quality. So a lot of synthetic protein, every protein on the market is synthetic. Every synthetic protein, your body won't absorb 100% of the protein. So you wanna make sure that when you are looking at the ingredients, that there's no like proprietary blends or anything like that. You wanna actually make sure that you know all of these. And then when you're looking at the ingredients, that there's no proprietary blends in there. That way you know exactly what you are getting in your protein powder because proprietary blends is just a big fancy word for saying we don't want to tell you what's actually in our stuff because we're afraid that someone's going to steal our recipe and so we're going to call it a proprietary blend when in reality who knows what could be in there a really bad filler could be in there anything like that so just things to look out for so when you're looking for protein powders especially online just look for reviews look at the reviews that people are leaving when it comes to the protein powder that's a really good way to gauge the average consumer. You know, a lot of people online, social media people, whatever, whatever, they use protein powders, yes, but they're also getting paid to do so, and that's totally fine. Like I said, we own our own supplement company, except we own it, so we get to control what goes in it, and we get to control what doesn't go in it, and we get to control the quality and things like that. So for us to put our name on a protein was huge. It was a very big deal for us because we wanted to ensure that it did taste amazing. It was the best on the market. Ours, in particular, does not make you bloated. A lot of people do bloat from protein powder, especially whey, just because their bodies aren't necessarily 
the human body isn't necessarily made to digest dairy or lactose. So something to look out for. If you do bloat from whey, I would suggest possibly looking into an egg protein or plant or hemp. So now that you know what protein is, the different kinds, and how to spot a good one, we're gonna dive into some FAQs that I get quite a bit about protein. So a lot of people ask if protein powder will make them fat, and particularly women ask this, and the answer of course is no. There's not a food on the planet that will make you fat. It's the quantity of the foods that will make you gain weight. So for me personally, I don't necessarily like to eat meat five to six times a day like my diet calls for. I've added a lot of mass over the years and the more muscle you have, the more protein your body will demand. So for me, I don't wanna be eating, we only eat everything that we, that we harvest ourselves and I don't like chicken, um, we won't eat beef. So our, our meat sources are limited to things we harvest. So like venison, um, stag, fish, things like that. I will buy tuna from the store, so that's really the only consumer commercial product that I will buy. So I don't really wanna be eating freaking tuna at breakfast, so sometimes instead of like drinking my egg whites or something, I will drink a protein shake. So just think of protein powder as a supplement because that's what it is. And what is a supplement? A supplement means that if you're not getting it through your diet, you should be supplementing it. Yes, whole food protein is always best. So things like, you know, your meats and your eggs and, you know, if you if you choose to drink dairy or eat dairy, we particularly don't. But if you if you're not getting the adequate protein that you do need through your actual whole food eating, protein powder might be a really good idea for you. If you enjoy eating all your meals, that's totally fine. You don't even need to touch protein. Protein powder is not required to be successful in the gym or to be a successful bodybuilder or anything like that. It is not required. If you're getting your protein macros through food, don't even worry about protein powder. Like I said, for me, after the gym, I don't necessarily like eating. Sometimes it is just easier to bring a shake with water and then add a scoop of protein and drink my meal. I like drinking my meals quite a bit. It's faster, it's easier. It's just a lot quicker way for me to get my nutrients in, especially being on the go and so busy all day long. And I like the taste of our protein. Um, I know a lot of, <laughs> we've tried a lot of protein powders, unfortunately, over the years that just taste absolutely terrible. So you do definitely wanna find a protein powder that you enjoy drinking. You should enjoy drinking this. So I almost consider my protein shakes like a treat or a dessert. Um, you can make protein ice cream. I have a lot of protein powder treats on my YouTube. I actually just uploaded one yesterday. No, this morning. So I actually just uploaded one this morning of different breakfast ideas that incorporate protein powder. Definitely check those out. It's just a good way to, you know, you make protein pancakes, you can make protein ice cream, you know, your shakes, you can make protein muffins, donuts, all kinds of stuff that taste good and will make dieting a lot easier for you. So that whole spiel was about if protein powder makes you fat, and it does not. So the only way that protein powder would ever make you fat is if you've already maxed out on the calories you're supposed to be eating each day, and then you drink a protein shake. But you can't attribute the weight gain to the protein shake. You could attribute it to anything that you ate throughout the day that would cause you to go over in your calories. So think of one scoop of protein as like three ounces of meat. That's all that it is. It's just a way to get protein into your diet if you aren't getting it in through whole food sources. So that was one question. Will it make me fat? Okay, so timing of protein powders. There's different, like I said earlier, different types of protein powders on the market. Some are best taken at night, so those would be a casein protein. They are a more slow digesting protein. So in theory, if you take it at night, your body will consume it throughout the entire night and you'll just wake up not starving. That's the idea, that's the theory behind it. Um, if you wanna, if you do get hungry at night, you can certainly test that theory out for yourself. There's different types of protein, like isolates, concentrates. I'm not getting into any of that right now. I'm not well versed enough in those types of discussions to have them with you guys, but you certainly can look them up for yourself if you do choose to do so. So as, as far as other protein timings, um, for me, I will do a shake after I lift, and then sometimes I will do a shake in the morning. But it's really beneficial and really saves a lot of calories 
when you're traveling if you just have a tub of protein in the car and a gallon of water and a shaker cup. You can save yourself on your diet so much when you're road tripping or if you're traveling, if we're flying, we'll throw a protein powder in a little baggie, especially like when we go to places like Las Vegas. Um, Vegas is very expensive when it comes to food and I've done a vlog about this, a blog, an actual blog about this. Um, I particularly don't wanna spend $19 on an egg scramble sandwich when I could just bring my own protein and drink it in the room for like 70 cents a scoop. That it just, it's silly to me when people, you know, don't plan ahead when it comes to trips like that. But you can really save yourself when it comes to calories and when it comes to money if you just pack a big bag of protein powder. And TSA will never stop you if you just bring the powder through airport security. We've brought five pound tubs of protein through before and they've never said anything. So certainly don't worry about that when it comes to traveling with your protein. So that's timing. Um, benefits of protein. So the benefits of, whoa. So the benefits of protein. So the benefits of taking a protein powder supplement, like I said earlier, you don't have to cook six meals worth of meat you can drink your shakes a lot quicker. I think they taste really, really good, especially our brand. I've had bad brands in the past. I'm not gonna say that all protein powders are perfect, but if you find one that you like and enjoy it, incorporate that into your diet. You will enjoy dieting a lot more. You can make the protein treats like I said earlier. So those are some benefits of protein powder and just making sure that you're getting enough protein throughout the day, good quality protein. So truly anyone can benefit from taking protein powder. You don't, like I said, you don't have to be some crazy bodybuilder or anything like that. If you're not getting enough protein throughout the day, you should probably consider supplementing with one scoop of protein powder or two. So if you are, you know, if you aim to get 140 grams of protein in a day and you're only getting 80, you might really wanna consider getting a protein powder supplement. So if you go to a box store or a brick and mortar store, sometimes they have samples that so you can try them before you buy their samples online. But like I said earlier, just look for the reviews online to see the true representation of protein powder or that particular brand. So those are some benefits. Okay, so I hope this video helped you guys. We went through what exactly is protein powder, the different kinds of protein powder, who will benefit from taking protein powder if it will make you fat? And just other odds and ends that kind of spouted in my brain while I was talking to you guys. So I really do hope this video helped. Like I said, this wasn't going to be a push the Bomar brand protein. We do have a lot of success with it. It is the best tasting protein that I've ever had, but that is not the point of the video. If you go buy someone else's brand of protein, that is fine. You are not going to hurt my feelings. This channel is just to educate you guys. There's so much nonsense out there that, oh, this is, you know, this is the best women's protein. There's no such thing as women's protein. It's not like you're buying women's chicken or women's beef. No, so the marketing tactics that people use, especially online and especially in magazines and on infomercials is absolute BS to be completely honest. So I really hope this video found everyone well and educated you and just brought some light to this ever popular protein powder topic. Um, like I said, if you're already getting enough protein through whole food sources, you might not see a huge difference by adding a protein powder in. And if adding a protein powder in exceeds your total calories for the day, it's not a good idea to add that in if you are trying to lose weight. So if you guys have any more questions about protein powder, definitely comment below. I know it's inevitable that someone will ask how much protein you should have per person per day. It's a really subjective question. Everyone's different and everyone's goals are different. If you're a female and even a male, you should be aiming for one gram of protein, one to 1.25 grams of protein per lean body mass. Lean body mass. So what does that mean? So for simple math, let's just say you weigh 100 pounds and you're 20% body fat. That means you're 80 pounds lean body mass. So you just times your body fat times your total body weight and then you subtract it and that's your lean body mass. So if an 80, if a 100 pound person at 20% body fat, they need 80 grams of protein at least. So that's kind of how you gauge how much protein you need. If you're an extreme athlete or you know, power lifter, some, some people do need like one and a half to two grams, especially men sometimes. So follow that rule of thumb, find what works for you. There's always rules of thumb. There's always people that are gonna exceed and go outside of the norm but just for the majority of people that's a good rule of thumb 
and your body, like any nutrient, can only absorb so much protein at one time, which is why I recommend eating protein five to six times a day throughout the day. That way your body always has protein to nom on, or else if you just take a ton of protein in the morning, your body's just gonna urinate out what it doesn't need like the rest of nutrients in the body. So you're just gonna create really expensive urine if you are kind of loading your protein all in one sitting. I just want you guys to be educated. I want you guys to have one place. That's what I want our channel to turn into. I want you guys to have one place where you say, oh, I have a question about carb cycling. Oh, I have a question about alcohol. Oh, I have a question about protein powder. And you can go to our channel and find a video that's not gonna shove product down your face, shove plans down your face, anything like that. Yes, we do online training and yes, we have products, but that's not, that's not our intentions. That's not our sole purpose in life is to make money. No, our, our purpose in life is to help as many people as possible. So if this video did help you, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe. I really want to just educate the world and bring some light to this nonsense fitness industry that, that has been created. So thank you guys for following. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, as always, comment below.